So I'm getting some messages on my YouTube channel which I, I don't think are quite warranted, okay, because the information that I put out there, believe me, it's researched, okay, and it's based on weekly meetings when 17 of us drivers get together and I compare data from my drivers and then only will I go out and make a video based on facts, okay, not on fiction but on actual facts. So when people say to me um, they can't read or see other vehicles on their passenger app, we're not talking your driver app, your driver app is on, but in your passenger app, you want to find out, I just happened to jump, this one dropped me off in Thousand Oaks, I switched on and I went through all the categories, X, XL, Assist, Black, I want you to see basically who's out there and show you that here, one, two, three, four, five, six, it'll now show eight cars, it used to show way more cars, but it still shows cars, ladies and gentlemen, okay. So, right now, on Assist, there were eight cars here. Um, I can blow it up and see exactly where they are and then position myself accordingly, right? Go over here. This is the SUV category. Um, I'm about to switch on. I can see there's only one SUV swirling way up here in Moorpark. I'm totally safe down here. I don't have any competition. 15 minutes away from me. Very safe place for me to switch on SUV, only one car. If there were eight SUVs, if it was a busier area, it would have shown up. I had just dropped off that passenger and now I wanted to get some intel. What is my next uh, step, right? What do I do now once I've dropped them off? Now we're in Uber XL. Looks a little bit different. There's only two of them swirling around here in Thousand Oaks, surprisingly, not very much. Used to be way more, by the way. Um, now it says the closest from me as a passenger, um, I'm the driver, I'm logging in as the passenger, um, it would be 11 minutes away, okay? Now, the next one that I'm checking here is black, category black. There was one car way down here in Westlake Village, probably 10 minutes away, there we go, 10 minutes away from me. I'm totally safe up here, right? Um, Maybe it would be a better idea, based on that area, to go down here into West Egg Village and join this guy, but be a little bit away from him, right? The very next one here, I'm looking at Uber X, okay? And there's multiple little cars around here, right, in this area. Now, do I want to jump right in the middle with those four cars? No. I'd, I'd want to get a little bit away from them. And that's why I say uh, these apps do give you a lot of intel, right? Um, now, in, in, in many of my videos, I talk about two phones and I get hammered on this. Oh, you don't need two phones, this guy's an idiot. No. I'll tell you when you need two phones. If you are driving on two or three platforms, can you imagine you're driving on Uber, Lyft, and Juno in New York? You've got six apps running. You need more than two phones to see what's going on, right? If you're purely on one platform, ladies and gentlemen, and you're only driving Uber, sure. You could toggle between your passenger app and your Uber app. You don't need a second phone for that, right? My video was made based on multiple driving on multiple platforms. In my case, I need two phones, right? So, again, you will only get the data um, on these cars if you switch into your passenger app and you put in a destination. In this case, I would have put in LAX and then immediately... I mean, that's a long trip, right? I can see the estimates on that. Um, from that location, Black would have cost $193 from Thousand Oaks. UberX would have cost $61, one third of that. Um, uh, SUV would have cost $237. And I've banged many of those Thousand Oaks to LAX at that price, $237. Three or four of those a day, and you're smiling, right, with an SUV. You're even smiling if you do two or three of those with an Uber X. That's $180 or $185, right? But you have to, ladies and gentlemen, you have to put in a destination, right? Otherwise, these little cars ain't going to show up and you're not going to get that intel. Now, if you purely switch on your passenger app, right, as a driver to see uh, who's swirling around, nothing shows up. And I think that is where the people are jumping into a conclusion. I can't see any cars anymore right, or no cars show up. You have to have to prompt the system and put in a destination so it shows you what the estimator gives you, what it's going to cost you, and how far the cars are away from you. So maybe that one little step you're forgetting to do there, I'm not judging you for that, right? 
I'm just making the video to show you how to get around that so you can actually see these cars. But I still maintain, if, if I compare our drivers, our 17 drivers, if I compare those numbers to some other operators, um, we work smart, ladies and gentlemen, not hard. We position ourselves properly. Sometimes, you know, my drivers or I will move five or 10 minutes in a different direction because we don't want to huddle up and sit there for 40, 50 minutes. I'd rather drive somewhere for five minutes and then, then only have to wait 10 minutes to get my next trip, right? So why waste 30, 40 minutes because you're sitting out there with five, six cars, they have no idea, they're all on top of each other. So you do get a ton of intel from the uh, passenger app. Again, if you're driving on multiple platforms, please, if you're driving on multiple platforms, let's say Uber, Lyft, and Juno, maybe three or two, you're running between two to four to six apps. And that is the only reason why I've told some people to get a second phone, right? Um, also highly, highly encourage you to drive on more than one phone, uh, on more than one platform, sorry, because it has happened before that Uber was down for four or five hours and you could switch over to Lyft. You will stay busier if, you, if you're driving with Uber and Lyft um, at the same time. You've got two apps running, whichever bites first, you drive off, switch off the other phone, right? You're just going to get more trips in a five-hour uh, session. On average, you're going to get more trips than just operating on one um, platform. Now, the one thing I do want to tell you is a lot of the people make a big mistake and they sign up for Uber and Lyft at the same time, okay? Here's, this is why this is a big mistake, because the requirements for Lyft and Uber to hit your targets amount of trips to get your bonus, they will conflict with each other. On Lyft, you might need 100 trips, and Uber, you might need 75 trips. You are not going to fit them in in that one month, right? You're going to shoot yourself in the foot and probably lose out on the Lyft bonus. So my word of advice to you is, Go after the Uber bonus first, right? You have the documents, you have the car, do your 50, your 75 trips, your 20 trips, collect your referral bonus, and then sign on to Lyft, and then fulfill the next amount of required trips to get your second bonus. Too many people lose out on one of the two bonuses when they simultaneously join with two rideshare companies at the same time. The long-term goal is to drive with two or three uh, companies so you stay busy and make more money. And again, the video is just to really dig in and give you some really, really good intel on the positioning of the other cars. If you blow that screen up on your phone, you can see exactly on what street or street corner they're at. You can see if there's two or three uh, cars around there and you want to position yourself accordingly. I wish you a fantastic day, my friends. Um, peace to you, drive safe. If you have questions, come to me. I will gladly, gladly answer them. And then also, um, if you are a newbie and you're thinking of joining with Lyft or with Uber, contact me, reach out to me. I will teach you how to make more money per hour. I will show you how to get higher ratings and how to keep those high ratings. I'm excited to help you. Have a great day. Bye.